I'm looking over uh, my, my list of uh, to-do things uh, that is uh, growing every day. But some of the things we're talking about today, just to let you know, right off the top of the show, if you have any medical questions, remember Russell Singleton, who's a physician assistant at Trip Family Medicine, will be joining us between 8.30 and 9 o'clock this morning. We do this every week with the good folks from uh, from Trip Family Medicine, and uh, he'll be taking some of your phone calls if you're so inclined also, if I get a chance a little later in the program, there's going to be a lot going on today. We have some some guests coming in and out, but I'd also like to, if there's an opportunity, just to uh, to make a couple of comments. And I have some sound from the the pastor at that church in North Carolina, where they have raised the Christian flag above the American flag. And uh, just for full disclosure, I am in support of him, and, and for I think obvious reasons that most of you would understand if I sit down for a few minutes and explain them a little later in the program. But I wanted to open today because I saw something, gosh, and it's got to do with a war going on overseas, but it also impacts perhaps some decisions we're going to have foisted upon us in Twin Falls coming up in a matter of uh, just a few months, October what? We've got, well, three, three and a half months probably away before we actually see the, uh, the, the first busloads of these refugees coming in here from, uh, from Syria, Muslim refugees, we should point out. And there has been some question about the, the vetting process that you do with all of this. One of the, uh, the people who was speaking in support of this project, I think it was one of the trustees at the College of Southern Idaho a few weeks ago at a meeting, may have accidentally let the, uh, the cat out of the bag when all this time we've been told these people are being vetted. But he, 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 he let it slide that, well, they're not really sure about who these people are and, and what their beliefs are and whether they'd be violent or not. He didn't put it in those words. But I saw that his comments, they actually made a newspaper, and I was reading it. I thought, whoa, wait a minute here. So this morning I walked into work, and I have a, an email, a daily email from The Hill. The Hill is a newspaper in Washington, uh, mainly read by politicians and, and many of their, uh, their sycophants and their very, uh, very close staff members. Uh, we say very close. It depends, of course, on how you know, last year the congressman actually is. Pentagon chief stuns lawmakers on Syria. Now, it's got nothing to do with what we're talking about here in Idaho, right? No, not at all. Stunning lawmakers on Capitol Hill, Defense Secretary Ashton Carter on Tuesday revealed that the Pentagon is only training 60 Syrian rebels to fight the Islamic State in Iraq and Syria, uh, better known uh, to most of us as ISIS, or ISIL, as the president calls it. He refers to ISIL because that's his non-recognition of Israel, which is part of the old Levant. Uh, that's another story for another day. The writer at the Hill says, while the program was designed to train thousands of fighters to take on the Islamic group, Carter said only a few dozen recruits have made it through the screening process. Where have we heard screening process before? Wait a second here. These people are going to be fighting these bad guys for us, and yet we can't clear them because they're bad guys too. So what do we know about this program and all of these people, 300 initially, who will be settled in the Magic Valley, with the numbers potentially reaching into the thousands? I just, I've got to tell you, <laughs> somebody somewhere is making a profit, and they're making a profit, and they really don't care what happens to you in the long run. That's why you have a sanctuary city like San Francisco, where you have a violent, illegal immigrants who've been deported half a dozen times, shooting young women as they walk along promenades. She was killed, by the way, if you didn't know that. And then people say, well, that's, that's just uh, anecdotal evidence. Well, folks, I, I'm getting to the point now where when I hear that, all I've got to do is start looking around at some news headlines. Breitbart has this one. A six-time deported illegal immigrant is charged in the felony hit and run of an Arizona mother and her two young children. The man allegedly admitted to being high on marijuana while causing the severe lacerations to a five-year-old boy. The five-year-old and a two-year-old were both taken to an area hospital. This tragedy, the writer says, comes within one week of two separate incidents involving previously deported illegal immigrants allegedly murdering women in two U.S. states, California and Texas. So how we, uh, half a week. Three big stories in half a week. And how many, how many others are we not hearing about? And I ask that question very seriously because the writer at Breitbart says this. The Arizona hit-and-run case was first reported by this is a website associated with a newspaper in Maricopa.com with a headline that simply asserted, quote, two children injured in Papago crash, unquote. 
Oh, well, you know, we here in mainstream media, uh, we're lobbying uh, along with our fellow travelers in the Democrat Party for this. Because having all these people here uh, will end up upending the Republican playbook for good. And all, <laughs> all of you evil white slave owners. Well, of course, none of you are today. But you, you're just like they were. And that way we'll be able to give you the comeuppance that you've always deserved. That's what they're thinking at these newspapers. So they wouldn't even report it at the paper. Somebody probably did a little digging and said, wait a second, is this guy actually here as a U.S. citizen? No. <laughs> so here you go again. And it, people wonder why the media, 70% of the American survey say the media can't be trusted. 70%. And that number keeps growing. Cannot be trusted. 70% believe the media will lie in order to buff, if you will, its, its own personal agenda, which is usually exactly the same agenda as their fellow traveling Democrats. 813, Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story 69. If you'd like to reach the program, you can give us a shout at 736-0300, 736-0300. Here here you go, Daily Signal, how San Francisco aided and abetted in the murder of Kate Steinle. Uh, The writer says, by some estimates, there are more than 150 U.S. cities that are endangering the safety of their citizens by refusing to turn over dangerous criminal aliens to the Department of Homeland Security or inquiring about the immigration status of suspects when they are arrested. Now, liberals will tell you that things like uh, a Roe v. Wade and the recent ruling on same-sex marriage, that this is now settled law, and so therefore you on the right, you, you, you buffoons on the right with your knuckles dragging on the ground, you can't argue with us about that anymore. Shut up and go behave yourselves. It's the law, they tell you. Well, the law says there should be no sanctuary cities. Hello? So you're telling me that it's, it's okay for you, but it's wrong for me to hold certain values and say, I don't necessarily agree with that law. Because if these people don't agree with the law, they just simply ignore it. And, and then they turn on to tell us we can't do that when it comes to an issue near and dear to us. Hypocrites. 70 right now. You're on the air on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. What's on your mind? Well, the other day I brought up a uh, hit and run. Uh, I mean, where one of my friends died in an accident by an illegal alien. And then just that on Sunday, I was at a four way stop. And I know for a fact that as I drove through it, that I real that the person driving the car across from me uh, didn't understand what to do. Now, uh, four way stops are pretty simple. Uh, but you know this kind of thing. If you if you've ever, as you're driving around, you notice that in some cases, you'll be behind somebody driving slower than they should be, or or doing things that aren't necessarily what we would call traditional in our driving practices in the Magic Valley, and a lot of times they're Hispanic. Again, this may sound like I'm prejudiced. I'm not. I have tons of business friends of mine that I do business with that are Hispanic. But you see, this all puts our lives in risk. And uh, if it's my, uh, like a, like I've said in the past, I have thirteen, I mean, eleven children, thirteen grandchildren. If any of them get hit, hurt, killed, God forbid, because somebody doesn't understand how to drive, because somebody's given them a a pass just because they want to, like Juan Williams says, uh, sanctuary cities are good. Juan, you're a bright eyed Dimwit. <laughs> Thank you for the call. Uh, hey, by the way, uh, I understand how people feel about all of this. And if you're telling the truth, we don't have to qualify it by saying, you know, I'm not, I'm not a racist. I'm not a bigot. I really like these people. You don't have to do that. If you're right, you don't have to simply keep qualifying it in order to please the liberals. Because remember, they're out to actually, they want you to qualify it. It, it moves you back towards their, uh, their game. You're up next, and you're on the air on Top Story with Bill Colley on KLIX. Bill, I just have a question, you know, regarding, you know, Trump's bill and everything else. I want to know, in your opinion, how many undocumented immigrants from any country will break laws? Undocumented? Yes. How do you get to undocumented? If somebody crosses the border... And they know, of course, they're not supposed to be crossing it in the dark of night or through a tunnel or hiding under the uh, uh, under the carriage of a truck. 
Is that how, how is that undocumented versus illegal? Well, okay. So, okay, let's use the word illegal. Okay. How many do you think will break laws? Well, that's a good question for the media, because the media has been complaining and, and running down Donald Trump, but maybe their fact checkers ought to go look into this and say, that's, all right, how many crimes are committed, point. and then compare right. that to the overall population and see what the percentage numbers are. No one's doing that in media. That's my point. But the answer is 100%. If they're undocumented or illegal, they are breaking laws. Sure. It's 100%. People need to wake up and smell the roses. That might be the best point of the day. I thank you. The fact that they've crossed the border illegally, they are already breaking the law 100%. 818, Bill Colley with you. Top story, News Radio 1310 KLIX. Have a woman coming up in just a few minutes on a lighter note. She's going to be talking with us about a fundraiser uh, for animals in the area. We have a lot of animals, shelter animals and the like, and they're looking for homes. And, of course, it costs money to uh, care for them. Uh, and, and a lot of them would make great pets for you. She'll be joining us in just a few minutes. Quickly, though, in the meantime, this story, someone sent this my way from a website called Jews News. And it's about a woman in Dearborn, Michigan, which is now an Islamic city. She says police forced her to remove her hijab after she was arrested for traffic violations. Well, she got picked up on a small violation, and as they were running her name, it came back that there was a warrant out for her arrest on other crimes. So they took her downtown and told her that when they needed to take her picture, she had to take the uh, the tent off. She refused, and they said, well, you can do it on your own, or we can remove your tent. Well, her headscarf. I mean, we're not, they're not going to take off the rest of the tent. And she said she broke down in tears and hurt her feelings, and now she's going to sue. She did comply, though. She's going to sue, though, because she says it hurt her feelings. So there, there you have that. Of course, if you just have a bunch of photographs of tents, how can you tell who these people are? Well, hey, no, that's mean-spirited and rotten, you know. We have to protect people's religious liberties, unless, of course, they're refusing to bake a cake. And if you're a Christian and you do that, wham, 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 we're going to beat the snot out of you. All right, well, also on a lighter note, coming up in about 20 minutes, we'll be joined by Russell Singleton from Trip Family Medicine. Here's a question. When was the last time you asked a friend for medical advice? Well, our friends at Trip Family Medicine will be live today between 8.30 and 9 o'clock. Russell's going to talk with us a little bit of a follow-up on diet and some other things about your health and the like. But he's also going to mention that, you know, we've got to be aware of those charlatans out there because people are desperate in many cases to lose weight, to look better, to, to find a way to get rid of chronic pain, whatever. And they're dealing oftentimes with people who just pop up on TV and say, I've got a bottle of snake oil here, and if you send me your life savings, I'll send it to you, and I'll make you all better. Well, Russell's going to warn us about some of these things and remind us you got to be very, very careful. Tune in each Wednesday at 8.30 for Better Health, brought to you by Trip Family Medicine in Twin Falls, across from the post office on Fillmore Street. Remember, life's too short not to feel good.